Markov models. Markov model is a type of stochastic process, sometimes referred to as a chain, as in Markov chain. The modeler is similar, the, the model is similar to finite state machine or automaton, except that the Markov model is executed by probabilistic rather than deterministic moves. And as such, the Markov model is non-deterministic, whereas the finite state machine is deterministic. Probability means that you don't know what is going to happen with, except with regard to a particular interval of certainty or of confidence based on prior observation of the system that you're studying. The first uh, of two issues we'll talk about is that we have determinism versus non-determinism, with determinism being inherent in systems where it's clear take you from one state to the next based on input, and non-determinism involving probability. So a deterministic machine is one that has a specific input stream or signal that drives the machine toward a well-defined trajectory of states, whereas a non-deterministic machine moves from one state to another where only probabilistic estimates are given to guide the machine in this state-to-state -state transition. In some cases, we do not know the inputs needed to take the machine from one state to another or the physical process may be inherently probabilistic as in the case of quantum mechanics. In some cases probabilistic approaches can be used when we have weak or little control over the process itself that we're trying to model. The result being that we are unable to predict state transitions based on our actions. Now, flipping a coin is a good example of a process if a coin is carefully flipped, say with a robot arm or just very carefully by the human, it's maybe possible to flip it from head to tails and then back again with the right motions. As these control motions are made less accurate, the coin flipping process becomes non-deterministic and we lose control over the process. That is, we no longer are able to choose which state will occur next based on our hand motion. Chaotic systems exhibit non-determinism for certain parameter ranges where the system is so sensitive to initial conditions that accurate control becomes problematic. Next we're going to talk about or go over examples of mathematical notation with two examples, one coin flipping and number two would be a flow chart but using a Markov model with both of these examples. The mathematical notation for Markov chain begins with the conditional probability of achieving a particular state based on the previous state. So if we take, for instance, the states of a, of a process, we'll say x1 is the first a state at time 1, x2 will represent the variable uh, for the state at time 2, and so on, up to xn. Now the conditional probability then is stated as such, is that capital P, or probability, of the nth plus first state equaling j given, this is where the conditional probability comes in, that at time n the state of the system was i and we'll say that that conditional probability is equal to 
or notated as P sub IJ. The way to look at this then, or to interpret it is, what is the probability that the system, given that it's in the state I, will move to the state J? Now another way to represent this in terms of a compact notation is to use the matrix notation. So let's go ahead and just erase this. And let's go ahead and specify a matrix, which we'll call the probability matrix. We'll draw large brackets left and right like that. And then, then the probability that we just mentioned will be specified as follows. This is the probability that the system will move from state 0 to the same state 0. So it's whatever probability exists for the system to basically stay in the same state, namely state 0. And then the next element in the matrix would be P01. The next element in the matrix would be P02. And then down here, we'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the matrix. Because we're running out of room here, we'll just assume that this matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix with the, which designates a 3 state Markov model. So it's of length 3 by 3. Alright, so that we can get some perspective on how we might view this visually instead of using a matrix to, to visualize it. Let's wipe out this area right here and then use that area to create a visualization for the Markov model. In doing so, we'll create, like we might for a finite state machine, we'll create a circle for each state. So we'll say this is state 0, this is state 1, and this is state 2. Then what you have is you have arcs going from one state to the next. Let's say you've got an arc going from here to here, and then on this arc we would put the probability that the system would move from state 0 to state 1. Let's say that probability is 0.5 or 1 half. So you might say, gee, there's a probability of the system going from 0 to 1 and that's a 50 percent probability and another 50 percent that it would just remain in the current state that it's in, 0. So we'd have to put a 0.5 probability there. And then we can create uh, perhaps another probability right here. And we might say there's a 1.0 probability or 100% probability that the system, once it's in state 1, will move to state 2. Okay, All the outgoing arcs from any particular state must add up to 1. This is the same kind of rule that you would find in probability theory. Now let's go ahead and uh, put, an, put an arc, say, from 2 to 0, and put a 0.3 on there, and say put the 0.4 on here, and then make a reflexive arc right here and that would have to be 0.3 if everything is going to add up to be equal to 1. Now let's go ahead and fill out a matrix that corresponds to this particular Markov model. This would be a 3 by 3 matrix 
and we would start with the probability we'd have to fill out say the first row and we'd say what's the probability of going from state 0 to state 0 Well, we can see that the probability is going to be 0.5 just by looking at the graph the probability of going from 0 to 1 is going to be 0.5 as well the probability of going from 0 to 2 is going to be 0 because I've already used two outgoing arcs and added my probabilities up to 1.0 and so there is no arc going from 0 to 2 and therefore the probability of going from state 0 to state 2 is 0 so what I do then is I'll go ahead and erase this part right here And then we'll just put in 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. And when we go ahead and proceed with the rest of the graph in a similar way, we go with state 1 here, and we note that there's only one outgoing arc to 2. This means that 1 to 2, this element within this matrix is going to be 1, and this will be 0 and this will be zero. So let's go ahead and put in these new values. So this is zero, probability zero, this is probability zero, and this is probability one. And then likewise, if we start at two, we know we can either have a 30% have a chance of going to 0, a 40% chance of going to 1, or a 30% chance of just staying where we are. So we have 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3. So let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this. Point three, point four, and point three, and that finishes up our matrix for this Markov model. For flipping of a coin, we have two states. We'll say that this is the head state where the head shows up. And then we're also going to have a tail state over here where tails shows up. So we're just flipping a coin up and down in our hands and it's either going to be heads up or tails up. And then unlike the finite state machine realization of this phenomenon or modeling of this phenomenon, we're going to use probability. So it's likely that if our hand tossing is something that we have not much control over and it's not clear to us whether heads or tails is going to come up based on, on how we flip, then it's probably going to be, let's say, a mean of 0.5 that takes us from heads to tails or 50% chance, and the 50% chance then that it will just be another heads. And likewise, we have really a symmetric graph right here, because this will be 0.5, and then this will be 0.5 as well. Here we have a flow chart. The flowchart begins with a start symbol, we'll say S, and this start symbol, which is a circle, is numbered number 0. And then the other elements in the flowchart are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So in this flowchart we begin at 0 and then we end at 8 down here. Once 
we have started the program defined by this chart, we go to 1, which takes 16 time units. So the number in parentheses then for each of these icons represents the amount of time spent in that particular block. This is this, the rectangular block is normally considered an assignment block and then this decision block is this diamond shape. So numbers 3 and 6 for instance are decision blocks. And if we look at this decision block right here, there's an 80 percent chance that we will move on to this assignment block and there's a 20 percent chance we'll move on to this assignment block. So this flowchart then describes a probabilistic system that represents a program and the execution of a program and as such it can be easily turned into a Markov model and the translation to Markov model is fairly straightforward it's just a one-to-one -one mapping so for instance uh, we would have the start symbol would be state 0 let's say and then we would move on to state 1 and there would be a 1.0 probability of moving there and then we would move on to state 3 and likewise there's be a 1.0 probability of moving there and from state 3 we move on to state 4 point eight probability and two with a point two probability so this just defines this structure over here defines the Markov representation of the program flowchart mm -hmm.